Hello and welcome to the highlights from the Tenants Premiership and Tenants National Leagues. We've reached the playoffs in the Premiership as four teams battled it out for a place in Saturday's final and their chance to get their hands on this trophy. We'll be bringing you extended highlights from those two semi-finals and we'll also round up all the action from Tenants National Leagues 1, 2 and 3. To start with then, we're at Curry, and their reward for finishing top of the league was they got a home tie at Milani against fourth place Edinburgh Ackies. The home side got the scoring underway, Jamie Forbes kicking over this penalty for the first points of the match. Wallace Nelson then added Curry's first try of the day, powering over from close range to give Curry the early advantage. Hi, 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 hi. Ackies got themselves back into the game with two back-to-back -back penalties, calmly slotted over by Jamie Looms. But their hard work was undone when they gifted Curry an easy try. Ben Appleson's ambitious pass inside his own 22 was intercepted by Forbes, who sauntered over to score. Looms kept the scoreboard ticking over in the first half with his third penalty of the day. That kick inspired them to their first try of the afternoon. From the restart, Aki's quickly turned the ball over and were straight back on the attack. Vincent Hart and Rory Campbell combined well down the left-hand side and a flowing move that was finished off by Jamie Sowell in the corner. Looms added the extras and for the first time in the match, Aki's were ahead. The lead didn't last long, however. Jamie Forbes nudged his side back in front with this penalty to give Curry a slender lead at the break. The second half looked to be a battle of the two boots, with both Jamie Forbes and Jamie Looms enjoying success from the kicking team. Looms kicked over this penalty to give Aki's the lead, before Forbes added two penalties of his own in quick succession to put the home side back in front. As they have done all season, Curry showed their resolve when it mattered most and they penned Aki's back deep inside their own 22. They got the rewards when Hamish Ferguson dived over to score, putting some breathing space between the two sides. The visitors were not done yet, however, and Campbell made the most of a quickly taken penalty to dart in under the posts. That was to be as close as it got, however, as Curry fullback Charlie Brett got his side's fourth and final try of the match dancing through a tired Aki's defence and seeing a place in the playoff final for Curry Chieftains. So the question is, who would be joining Curry in the final? The two teams battling out were second place Moor and third place Hoyk, who met at Fullerton Park. The ever-reliable Kirk Ford got Hoyk underway, converting this penalty from nearly the halfway line. Marr responded with a penalty of their own, a much easier kick this time from Colin Sturgeon. Hoyk went in front again with the first score of the match. The visitors did well to recycle quick ball from the breakdown and worked the ball wide to number eight, Stuart Graham, who powered over. Ford added the extras from out wide and the visitors led 10-3. Marr's response was immediate. Scott Bickerstaff was heavily involved in the build-up and then finished off a well-worked move for the home side. Sturgeon levelled things up from the kicking tee and we were all square at 10 all. Marr added what proved to be a pivotal second try just after the half-hour mark. From a line-out, Marr moved the ball through the hands in midfield before David Andrew broke the line and set up Ben Johnson for the score. Sturgeon converted again to give the host a seven-point cushion. That proved to be the final points of the day. Both sides had their opportunities in the second period, but ultimately it was very much a tale of two strong defences, with Marr coming out on top and booking their place in the playoff final. That means it's the top two, Curry and Marr, who will meet in the Tenants Premiership final this Saturday. Curry will have home advantage for that one after finishing top of the league. To Tenants National 1 now and there were six games to look back on from the weekend. Our coverage comes from Millbury where Ayr hosted Melrose. It was the visitors who got off to the perfect start. From kick-off they charged down this kick allowing Elliot Ruthvan to run in and score after just 15 seconds. Melrose were unfortunately reduced to 14 men and Ayr made the extra man count. Scott Clellan with the pick and goal to score. Yeah, 
Ayr got their second try shortly after, and it was Scott Cleland again finishing off this well-worked move down the left-hand side. Melrose got their second try of the day in very similar fashion to the first. Once again, Elliot Ruthven charged down this kick and ran in to score. Jamie Bova slotted over this penalty to give Ayr a slender 15-14 lead at the break. Into the second half now, and it was Ayr who dominated proceedings. Stuart Collier, the man at the back of this mall, to score. Air scored again in the second half and it was from their own 22. The kick forward was gathered well and then there was a couple of brilliant offloads in the midfield before Harry Lynch went over to score under the posts. Ayr added their fifth try in fine fashion. The ball was worked out wide to Richie Simpson, who danced past a couple of defenders down the right-hand side and went over. Ayr added their final try of the day and once again it came from their own half. A well-worked move exploited gaps in the Melrose defence and Jamie Bulba ran in unchallenged to finish it off, giving Ayr a morale-boosting win and consequently ending Melrose hopes for promotion. Bermier's stay in Tenants National 1 will come to an end this season after they fell to a heavy defeat at home to Bigger. Gala made light work of Highland at Netherdale with an impressive, comfortable bonus point win to continue their push for promotion. In the capital, Harriet's marched on with another bonus point win, this time beating Dundee at Golden Acre. And it was a bad day for sides in the bottom half of the table as Watsonians couldn't continue their winning streak in 2022. They came off second best in a close run affair at Kelso. There was a cracking encounter between Stirling Wolves and Cartha Queen's Park in Stirling. 86 points were scored on the day and were equally split between the two sides, the match finishing 43-43 in the end. So what that does to the table, as previously mentioned, Bermier's stay in National 1 will come to an end this season. With just two games remaining, they won't be able to avoid the drop. It is all to play for, however, between Cartha and Watsonians, with two teams going down this season. At the top, it is Gala who lead the way, having caught up with their games in hand. They're two points clear of Harriet's, with three games remaining, with Bigger closely followed in third. Looking ahead to next week's fixtures, and there's some Friday night rugby to look forward to, with Ayr taking on Cartha. On Saturday, there's big games at both ends of the table as Harriet's face Watsonians and bigger host Gala. In Tenants National 2, GHK storm to victory over Kirkcaldy. That wins mean that they only need one point from their next game to secure the title. The battle for second place got even more interesting at the weekend with Newton Stewart beating Dumfries Saints. This allowed Stewart's Melville to move to a point behind the team from the south, but with a game in hand. It doesn't get any easier for Saints as they host GHK next week. At the other end of the table, Kirkcaldy will be looking to edge further away from the relegation zone as they play White Craigs and will be hoping that Preston Lodge can do them a favour against Gordonians. In Tenants National 3, West of Scotland's promotion hopes were ended after their defeat to Strathmore. That result meant last Wade were crowned champions and they'll be playing in Nat 2 next year. Our Fife currently holds second spot after beating Murrayfield Wanderers, but they'll need to keep a close eye on Berwick behind them, who've got four games in hand. Berwick play the champions elect on Saturday, while at the bottom end of the table, both Ardrossan and Greenock will be looking to pick up points in their fight against the drop. 
So in Tennant's National One, it is a three horse race at the top as Harriet's Gala and Bigger are all fighting for the race for promotion. But all eyes will be on the Tennant's Premiership final on Saturday. It's a battle of East against West as Curry take on Mar. Don't forget to join us live on Scottish Rugby Channels. We'll be streaming that one for you to watch and we'll find out who will get their hands on this trophy. Join us then.